Hello, this is Victor and here with a new painting tutorial and this time I'm going to explain how I do the evocators with the colors of Ghost of Azir. This is the stone horse that I'm painting uh, and it's a, a personal stone horse so it's uh, yeah if you don't find this in the book it's because it's uh, a stone horse of my invention. It goes with green armor, uh, white and pulp, dark, deep purple cloth. So I will uh, do a tutorial on that and I hope you enjoy um, this tutorial. So let us start first painting the armor. And this is one thing that you have to be careful on this miniature. So there are parts that are difficult to reach when it's on the base. So I recommend you, let me move the camera a little bit. Here, I recommend you uh, to paint first the bottom part and the armor before gluing, especially this clothes, because you will not be able to reach this part. Okay, so, but as the armor is also quite high then, I will go first with the armor. And here I will follow, uh, the armor will be almost uh, green everywhere, and I will keep maybe some uh, zones with uh, the white. So we are going to apply a thin layer, and as you can see I also prefer to start with a uh, white primer, uh, especially if you do light colors. I recommend also if you go for the gold, you start with the white primer. It's going to be much easier to, to have the gold on top of white. Uh, although Retributor Armor, I have to say, it's a great gold and it covers almost everything. So I'm going to apply Sibarit Green. Okay, what I'm applying now is Sibarit Green. This one. On uh, all the armor plates. Uh, just, I will leave maybe this knee one uh, on white. I'm just thinking. Just looking forward because this one I will I will leave this will be gold and I will keep this green. So I just like to put some touches of some parts of the armor to be or um, white or gold. Uh, normally this uh, shoulder pad will go on white and the, and the shoulder pad will go on white on both of these cases. When, and when I have to do the prime the shoulder pad with the lion will go on gold color. So I will do that. I will paint. Uh, I will do a thin layer of silvery green on all the armor plates, and I come back once this is done. So the green have been applied, and now I'm going to apply uh, the purple on the clothes. Uh, as again, I'm trying to paint first the part that's going to be difficult once it's on the base. So it's going to be the inside of the clothes. So this is why I will use Nagarot Knight for the clothes. And as we did for the armor, we go for thin layers. Uh, Nagarot Knight is it's covering quite nicely over any surface. Okay. So we are going to apply this on all the clothes. Okay, I will just leave this cloth on white. Okay, and the rest of the cloth will go with this deep purple. So I do that. I will apply that and be back once this is done. So after applying the purple, we are going to apply Murfan Brown on the different part where we have bells and letters. So I have applied this, as you can see I was applying that. I apply this on the bell. Okay, and we try to notice the moment that we maybe we need to go back to the green later on and if we see that there is a white spot we are going to eliminate that one okay so it's two bells we try to do was the handles of the weapons as well especially where we have this type of leather finishing okay this here and the other side and as well on the sword here on this side okay imagine this to be a type of leather I do the joints of the armor okay like this one as you can see I'm just jumping from one side to the other and just to show you the different part that I will do with more from brown okay so I will do also this joint here in the armor and I change to smaller rise to have a little bit more of control. Once, yeah, no, this, maybe the, the separation will not do, look that great. 
but later on we're going to apply a wash and you will see that the the contrast is going is going to come okay so we apply it here so I will we are going to apply this on the different parts and I'm back so I just put him on a base to make it easier to handle and now uh, I'm going to use Gauss Blaster Green for the parts that will go white later on or will go white with a green tint to be exactly so we are going to put this on this cloth okay shoulder pads and the knee protection okay so again we use this one, it's quite thin down, I already thin down on the pot, as I say, normally I thin my paint directly on the pot, I know that the best practice is to use a wet palette, but I'm so used to do painting that way that it's, it's, yeah, sometimes the bad habits are difficult to, to stop them. So I will... Yeah, I know that this will not have too much contrast on the knee. Uh, I was hesitating if doing everything gold, but I prefer to keep the gold just for the ornament and keep the rest of the knee protection with this color. Okay. The things that I'm still hesitating is how I will do that. One thing I think I will do it like a, if it's a, a type of reservoir or flask. And then, yeah, I'll do the other in gold, like an ornament. So I will do that. We are going to do the two shoulder pads and I'm back. Okay, next step, let's move this a little bit. I'm going to apply uh, Auric Armor, my uh, Retributor Armor, where I want uh, to have gold. Okay, this is going to be most of the details on the miniature. I'm going to do this, let's start with this thing here, for example. Okay. We are going to do the different details. I will do as well these ones. The rim of the armor plates. I will do. This thing I will do it blue as I did for the other, but I will do gold. The upper part and will leave blue for the ten. This one I will do like the top gold, leaving as well the bottom in blue. Okay. So we are going to apply this um, retributor armor on all the parts that we want and to make it gold, so I will go back here this detail just to show you different parts and when you have this type of detail here one thing to help you is go with the brush almost horizontal okay so you see this the, the arrow here this one here so you go with the brush almost horizontal and you will cut the detail.
So I will apply the gold on all the different parts and I'm back once this is done. So next step I'm going to do the blade of the sword and I will use a storm a storm host silver. I want for a quite a light metal. Okay. So I will apply this on the silver blade. And although I want to do this decoration with a different color, I I will go over and paint this later. Okay. On silver I will only do the blade when it's going to be steel in reality. Okay. to use Baharo blue for the blue parts. Okay. This will include the end of the staff and some decoration that they have uh, on, on this guy. Okay. So we will apply this here for example. Okay. And I will do the this parts. Okay, this will give a little bit of magical look. I uh, just doing this as a base color, and yeah, later on I will. We're going to do all the effects, and now I am just applying all the base colors, and this will finalize all the base colors I'm going to use for this miniature. So I will do the blue, and I come back once this is done. Next step, I'm going to use. Uh, the Vachi Violet, and I will apply this on all the Violet parts. Uh, will not give too much shade because of the Violet we have used is already quite dark, but will help to improve the definition of the purple and to give a little bit of depth. Not too much. We are going to work more on the highlights. I don't want to go for uh, the other option is to go for a noon oil, but I don't want to go that dark on the on the purple. So we will apply the Vachi Violet, as you can see what is accumulating is already dark. Okay, and we're going to put the same as well on the clothes. This will help to have a nice defined border as well, because it goes into the recesses. Try not to know we have to be quite precise and not to go out of the parts where we need the, the violet to be. Okay, well, this, okay. We are going to apply also a void that is pulling as usual. And I will apply. In that case, I need to forgot to do one thing. I need to first start from the bottom. It was a mistake on my side. So we are going to remove him from the base at the moment. Because I want to be sure that I do the inside of the cloth. Okay, so we are going to go here, do this inside, okay, and I'm going to go here and do the inside as well. Okay, this way I was not putting him yet on the final base, although I'm painting the base separately, and later on I will glue or I will attach him to the base. We're going to apply the cloth. Okay. Try not to dirtan the the blue here and the but we go like that so you will see that the purple will help to have a very nice definition where the purple starts and finishes. Uh, don't worry if I have a little bit of white there, we are going to clean up when we do the edge highlight there in that area. Okay, and we are going to apply this as well here. Okay, we, the front. we can glue it, we can put it back to the base now. Like that, we don't need to push it to the end of the completely. Okay. 
Yeah, that is called the imposition. And then, as usual, when I do a wash, I will wait at this device completely before doing the next step. I prefer not to touch a miniature when the wash is drying, because if you just touch the wash or something like that, and even with the movement, the wash can move. But it's very easy that you touch a part that you have just washed and then you mess up everything. So I prefer really to wait until the wash is really dry before doing any further step. Okay, so the wash is done. And now we wait that this dries before doing the next step. Sorry, here I mistake and I forgot this one. And even though I put green stuff, this joint is not well dissimulated. If I put too much wash, there's a problem that you can have. But before it's drying, you can drag it all with the brush and you will avoid the problem. Okay? You see? And now we wait. And I'm back when this is dry. Okay, next step when the fireplace washes have dry, we are going to use Agvax Air Shade and we are going to use that on the brown parts. Okay, I go, go for more precise brush. I want to, and we are going to apply this. In the bell and all the brown parts only on the brown parts so we try to be precise and not to touch other parts okay So this part and we do this part here. Okay. And we wait that the wise dries before doing the next step, but we normally do. Okay. So normally what I do to do that is I painting yeah, I wait and you can do batch painting and paint another, uh, do another middle at the same time. Uh, and then when you arrive to the, when you do all of them, the first one is a very good vibe. The other option I do is I paint other things in the meantime. So in that way I can, uh, while I'm waiting, I'm painting another miniature. Okay, so here we have, and now I wait at this device before doing the next step. Okay, next step, we are going to apply Reglan Flesh Shade on the gold bars. Okay. Put this here. We are going to put, we have to be very careful on this part, for example. I don't want to dirt on the cloth. If you dirt and you need to come back with the green, we have applied before, but here I want to go. We are going to make the hard line later on. Here you can go a little bit more stronger. I mean stronger, not. And we are going to apply this everywhere, okay? We are going to do this, the hammer with the linings. This is quite tricky because it's quite... It's not well defined there. Okay. As usual, try to not avoid that the wash is pulling anywhere. So we are going to do this. All, all the gold. So the, the point is we are going to shade all the gold we have in this miniature. We're going to do also this back 
following here, this type of magic thing he has at the back. Trying to do this as well. Yeah, the helmet. Okay. Apply this on the helmet. So I will do all the other gold parts and I will come back once it's dry. Okay, next step, now that the, uh, the um, regular flesh shade has um, dry, we are going to apply Coelia Green Shade. This is mainly for the armor and also for the gold. So we are going to apply this On the armor and then to do that I'm going to focus mainly to do this the armor so the idea is well you can go like that that we can clean up later on so it's to really do all this type of armor joints and make them we're going to do the shading as well here okay the shading here the rivets don't forget Do that and then here on the on the breast armor paint we are going to do like that okay so go all over the armor plate because I want to give this will make the gold make uh, look older so I'm going to do the same for example on this one here It will help on, on we are going to clean up this later on the the green we get we it's going too much but we like I like to have a little bit of green going out so this can help to frame the detail here I'm going to play as well here on this gold this is why I was waiting to do this one of the last washes because I want to use that, and uh, here I realize now that I forgot to do the gold in the knee production, so I will only to do this later on. So I'm going, to, so I will not work on the knee production. Because I forgot to do the. I think I will do is the separation of the knee production with this, with the leg production, and we are going to do that. The same here. Okay. So here, but the uh, uh, the point is. To and then I will check of course and I will try not to forget the inside and the inside I will not go with very very so I will go quite heavy because it's the inside so I want to create the shade also because it's inside the leg it will help to, to sell that is shade by the clothes. And here we have too much. So when we put too much wash, come up with the brush and we take out the excess. Okay. We'll do also this upper part of the leg. Put it back to the base. Okay, we are going to finish the arms and all the gold. So 
So in this one, we are going to go just over that. I forgot in the previous one, it's not a big. I like the greenish tone on the gold. It's giving it a more old looking gold and it looks more integrated to the green of the armor. Like this. You can leave, for example, we'll leave this, this darker gold. And then I will, on, sorry, on this warmer gold and then I keep not the green for the rest. So you can give some objects with the different with a warmer gold and not do the wash with green. We'll add a little bit of variation and here I'm not going quite, quite like that. I will do the hammers. If you, you can go a little bit on top of the shoulder pad. looking much me I, I like it. you have much more contrast okay, I tell eliminate too much I don't want to look too much green so I eliminate a little bit the excess of paint and we keep working so we do now the helmet See, and the sort of course, the full arm. So, I will work this on the rest of the gold and green, and I'm back. Last wash that I'm going to apply, and I'm going to finalize here the first part of the painting tutorial because I, I think it's a good moment with all the washes done we are going to apply a uh, Drakenhof nightshade or blue wash dark blue wash on, on all the parts that we are going to do with uh, with blue okay so I know it's a little bit dark we are going to but I, uh, we, are, we will work with that later on okay so we'll do another thing so you apply this once on these parts Okay, and then on these runes, I will apply Gilliman Blue. Okay, Gilliman Blue is a glaze, it's much lighter. You can apply also Gilliman Blue on the other parts, but I think with that, like that, will work well as well. Okay, we are going to apply Gilliman Blue here and right here. And as well on this one here. Okay, we will know that all the way the green was still a little bit fresh, so I will wait. What no, very. I think I will apply a little bit of this Gilliman blue as well here. Okay, I will wait now that uh, all this device and yeah. We will come back now with the second part. So here I will finalize the first part of the painting tutorial of the evocators. So this is the color scheme that will go and the second part will be mainly focused on highlights, cleanup, highlights and cleanup. So it's going to be everything. So we are going to start from the clothes and we are going to start working up to do the, yeah, the helm and also doing the uh, ice highlight, uh, ice, sorry, ice, um, Oh, glowing, the glowing eyes. Okay, so that's all uh, for this first part. Uh, I hope to do it. I, I will do it maybe in two or three parts, depending how long it takes me to do all the highlights. But I want to do this in quite detail, so you can enjoy that. And please give a like if you have liked this um, video. Let me know what do you think on the starting point. Uh, this is the colors of Miami. And